Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about the short versus long term in business. So if you are in business, thinking about getting into business or heck, just want to spend some time, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Well, today we are talking all about the short versus the long term. And I have to say, this is uh, relatively prompted from the TikTok side of things where there has been an interesting amount of people watching some certain videos out there um, that uh, explain how you can kind of get fast money and all that. And unfortunately, some people have fallen into that trap. I don't know if it's a trap. It's not a trap. It's content, right? Um, and maybe that's you. Maybe you're new into business and you're just trying to figure out how to get customers, how to build this thing. What is business just in general compared to like a job? And that's kind of what we're going over today. And I know some of you are out there have been doing this a very long time. And by the way, thank you so much for always listening and following. And so many of you have like reached out and been like, yo, I listen. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you. So I just appreciate it so much on that end. Uh, but this trend, if you will, of kind of getting into business and only focused on the now has been kind of an issue. Um, I've gotten into a few conversations, if you will, with people who I've tried to maybe help explain some things, or at least my thoughts, and uh, they didn't want to hear it. And unfortunately, there is a certain group of people as far as getting into the industry that uh, sometimes have um, they don't want to listen to anybody else. So that's what we're talking about today. Because I thought, what the heck? Uh, a lot of OGs already know this, and 99% uh, of the industry understands this concept, but I'm going to more or less kind of reiterate everything in that side. And it's basically this. When you're building a business, you have the short term and the long term. You have both of those pieces, and they both do have to kind of be focused on because when you're building a business, every piece to it is part of it. I think where some people end up getting lost is they think of this because this is the first time they've owned a business and they think about it as a job. They think about it as like, well, I need money right this second. I need to, and I understand that because obviously everybody's been to that position. But if you're going to create a thing, you have to create it right. And I always put out some corny analogies. I'm going to do it again. But I always say that if I build a foundation for a house, a one-story house, I can't then decide I want to put a 10-story skyscraper on the same foundation, rip it down. But I can't. I have to go all the way back to the basics, build the thing to support the business of a 10-story building, right? So there is a difference between the short and the long term. Now, in a job, people go, well, you got to think of your long term. What are you going to be doing? It's very hard because none of it's dictated by you. If you show up and do a good job, then maybe you'll be kept. But anything can happen in a job and you lose it. You don't have it anymore. You don't have a job. In a business, you're creating a thing, a thing of value. You're creating a structure, right? Maybe you're going to hire people down the road. Maybe you're going to have multiple trucks. Maybe you do have multiple trucks. Maybe you do have people. Maybe you're going to build something that eventually you could sell or give to a family member or maybe your kids will take over. Understand that with a business and a job, there is a really, really big difference between the two. I think that there is a small section of people who focus more on the now and not on the long term. And I'll explain what I'm saying. If you go and do door knocking, which is the new thing you see in the content, it's all out there, right? These guys not only, unfortunately, like everybody, uh, have exaggerated numbers. They have said these things that are obviously not true. They don't even make sense. Every 
couple years something like this comes out where this they put all these numbers and you're like that that's not a thing that it's not even literally the definition of of this i won't even get into it or who they are but unfortunately uh you did not sell um 9800 homes doing door to door if you did that then you didn't have time to do the door to door uh, 9,800 homes. Uh, if you did four homes a day, every single day, five days a week, it would take you nine and a half years to do that. When are you also selling your door to door stuff? Right. But what's happening is, uh, because there is so much content, other people go, ah, man, I can, you can make $2,000 today. But here's the thing. If you're a solar guy, you sell solar or roofing, you sell roofing door to door is great. Because all you need is the customer to say, yes, done, you're on to the next customer. You're always finding more customers because if I sell you a roof, you don't need another roof for 30 years. But if you're building a company, especially in a service company, window cleaning, obviously, pressure washing, house washing, all that stuff, these are repeat jobs. Every customer I have come in, I want to have for six months, every six months, for as long as they'll have me. That's a business. That's a company. I'm not looking for the right now, make a dollar, go find somebody else. This is absolutely the most inefficient way to try to make any type of money. Right? So unfortunately, some people come in and go, oh man, I just sold all these jobs. It's going great. Okay, you did, but you didn't have, you're not building a business, you're selling the now, which again, you can have kind of both pieces, right? But that's the difference between a job and a company. A job is right now. How do I make money right this second? How do I pay bills right this second? A company is, okay, how do I build a thing of value that builds on its rotation? Ro rotation is momentum. Momentum is like when your car breaks down on the side of the road, you have to get out and push it. Get it off the road, right? I know in this day and age, people don't do that because they all got new cars. But... If that happened, the hardest part is the beginning. It's to get it going, right? And then all of a sudden momentum happens and what you're putting in is translated by what it's doing and it's so much easier. The reason that 99% of businesses or whatever this statistic is, 95, 90%, whatever it is, the reason 90% of businesses fail is not because of the economy. It is not because, it, well, my area is flooded with competition. It is not any of that. It is not even these guys who are out there selling jobs for no money and then fighting the fact that they can't find work. No. What it is, is not understanding business. People get into business sometimes for the glamour of business. Man, I can't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my logo. I'm going to have my name. And that's awesome. That's all part of it. It's what makes it exciting. But understand that you're not going to make money for a while. It's really hard to kind of get into things. As it starts going, when you talk to guys that have been in business for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, these are the guys who maybe you're out of the truck at two, two years, five years, whatever the time might be for you. You can't do that in the beginning. Maybe 10 years down the road, you have operations officers and you're not even in the day to day, right? You pick and choose and then people look at that and go, oh, that's what I want. I want to sit back and do nothing. Okay, that takes you 10 years to do that. And then what happens is people start business and they go, oh man, this is really, really hard. I just can't find customers up. Oh, guess I'm, I can't keep doing this. That's the difference. Momentum is what you build to help you go. Momentum takes time. And unfortunately, in the instant gratification type world, the most successful businesses are the ones that have patience. Focus and hustle in the very beginning is absolutely crucial because the faster you get there, the more momentum you can build. I know guys who have had a million dollar company by the time they were 21. I know a guy. He's phenomenal. Great friend and his company is absolutely one of the most amazing companies that I've ever seen. The kid is so absolutely smart and it is amazingly rare. When somebody says, I was a millionaire at 22. He had a million dollar company. He wasn't a millionaire. Understand what the definition of a millionaire is first before you go and blurt that out. Because people are impressionable. They go, oh, man, this guy was a millionaire at 22. No, he wasn't. Not at all. A millionaire means you have a million dollar 
a million dollars in equity, in capital, either liquid or not, right? If you have a million dollars in assets, but you owe the bank a million dollars, you're not a millionaire. If you have a company that made a million dollars, you paid people to do that. You have expenses, you're not a millionaire. So the problem is sometimes people put this stuff out there, right? People put out this big kind of facade. They put that out there and uh, unfortunately people fall into the trap. But the guaranteed way that you're gonna succeed in business, which is the hard part for some to understand, is the repeat side of business. Let's think of it this way. If you're out there busting your hump getting customers, that customer is only valuable to you if it just has starts happening, right? If I can get one customer, I have a job every six months forever. Hypothetically, obviously people in. If I can go do 10 jobs, every six months I have those 10 jobs. Boom, 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 boom. If I can go and get 20 jobs, say I get 30, right? Every day of the month I go and sell one job. I got 30 jobs. That's 30 jobs every six months for the future. When I fill up one month, I have that same month with the dental clothes and everything else, repeat. That's momentum. That's what you can do is by getting customers, having them have an awesome experience, loving your company, booking them again, you're gonna have them in repeat. That's how you get successful. If you go out there and get those same 30 customers and then you do the job and you're like, all right, awesome, we'll talk later. Hopefully they call me. Or you did such a bad experience where you got every review you have is a one star no one's repeating. Your re repeat percentage is so absolutely small because you force them to go do this thing in the beginning, right? You know I hate door knocking. And again, I'm just some idiot who sits in front of a, a screen and talks to you. So maybe I know a thing or two, but maybe you know better. And that's absolutely cool. You can do it however you want, but, but hear me out on that. If I go in and I A, go door knocking, which by the way, before you tell me door knocking is okay, have a house have a place and then in your head think if somebody just came to your door selling you something a you've already created a bad experience if you've watched any of the stuff that's out there all of a sudden they're forcing these people and they're pressuring a high pressure and pressure 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 finally you get them to say yes because they crack they just want it to be done you didn't create a good experience what you did do is upset some people and that's why all of the reviews on these companies are absolutely horrible. And the bigger thing is, I don't want to get to your place, and I know it's a $299, but I go and go and go, and all of a sudden it's $140. That is not a win. Not only did I not make money, but I'm not getting a repeat person, so now I'm going to spend a bunch of money to make this $140 just so I can go and try to sell it again. Absolutely does not make any sense. None whatsoever. And that's the difference. Repeat is absolutely key to a successful business. By the way, if you like any of this content, um, definitely follow. Let me know. Um, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. I'm going to be completely open. That's my shameless plug. I want to put your orders in. I want to be your rep, but I also want to help you genuinely. This is what I do. This podcast has been going on for six years. Every Friday for six years, having not missed one knock on wood. I've done the podcast. I also own America Window Cleaner Magazine. I've done videos. I have my own YouTube channel out now because I want to put even more content out. I'm on TikTok. I'm on everything. By the way, my new YouTube channel, if you could go give me a subscribe there, it's Jersey underscore nation. Just go subscribe. It's free. My number, by the way, is 862-312-2026. Let me put your orders in. That's like a virtual high five. So please do that. Um, Go to awcmag.com and get the magazine also. Okay, shameless plug. Let's jump on to strength. Strength in a business is what makes a company last and a company not. And I'm going to say something that I always hate talking about, but is an absolute truth. And I know a lot of companies, unfortunately, that, that when COVID happened, which I don't even like talking about it because it was a bit there of uncertainty, when COVID happened, there was so much uncertainty that people jumped ship, closed their companies, 
or they just didn't make it. They couldn't pull through. They were not strong enough to pull through having a hiccup like that. Now, no one could have planned for what happened. Nobody could have planned for you literally being like, hey, FYI, busiest season of your year, you're not allowed to do anything as we're figuring this out, right? After a month, we were all of a sudden, we could get back out there and all those people couldn't survive that because they didn't have strong companies. They were so close to the edge that they did not survive. And the problem with that is, is now look at your company you have now. And this is just for you. Think of this. If work stopped right now, right? New customers, just you could not do anybody's job for a month. Could you survive that? Now, obviously, you got to have some savings. You got to have that nest egg. Maybe if you went through COVID, you do. But, but I'm saying the company, if you didn't have those customers, when things started coming back up, could you call them? Would they, oh, absolutely. We'll still have you. Absolutely. Or would you never hear from them again? The strength of a company is how you do this. You know, I speak all the time on having a um, experience over just people who focus on clean windows. The experience is where people love you. They love your company. They love what it makes them feel like. And they want to have it again. That's the experience. Experience is strength. If you have that piece, you're absolutely winning. And a lot of companies don't have that. And unfortunately, if this is like you're listening to this, you're like, hey, this one kind of hits home. Like maybe I'm not where I need to be on that. Just change that. Change mindsets in business. One of the biggest things you can see happen with companies. And look at it. Take your blinders off and not your company even, but just look at it. This is how I started. When companies start, they either start as like a side hustle, right? They either start kind of on like, oh, I can do this thing and all of a sudden I'm making some money, but they don't realize the business side of what they could make or what they could create. As soon as the mindset changes from that whole, it's a side hustle, it's a job that pays well, to like, I could make this a thing. I could, I could have a company. As soon as that mindset changes, the, the entire business changes. I still remember. I still remember that. This is years ago. I'll, I'll give you kind of a quick uh, little uh, briefing here if you want it or not. When I started my company, uh, the Wii had just come out. If you remember that Nintendo Wii. Yeah, that's uh, quite a while ago. Um, but this was in the beginning. I don't remember if it had just come out or whatever. But uh, a buddy of mine had it. And we would go and do it. And he was the guy I hired first. I knew I wanted to run a company. I wanted to have, a, ah, he was out of work. And we kind of, I, I hired him after my first job. There would be days where we'd just be like, I don't know, man. Let's push today. We'll just go play some some games. We'll go play uh, Wii, you know. And for the first few months, it was like that. Until one day, I was sitting down. And I was kind of looking at everything. I'm like, man, oh, man. Like, wouldn't it be cool if I could take all of the jobs that I did, like all of these people, like all these customers, like all these people, like f they trusted me and did everything. I went and I did a home show right away in the beginning. And this is uh, back when did phenomenally well. I mean, overnight I had just a, a, a just a slew of, of work. It's like, man, wouldn't it be nice if that just happened all the time? Like if I always just got that much? Wait, why, why isn't it? Why can't I do that? Like I've done it. I've gotten customers, why can't? And then I started thinking about businesses. That's what businesses do. They are always getting more customers. And instead of just going, oh, I did these things, that's what they're doing all of a sudden. It's like, if I took my like lack of my, my working in the beginning, I, I only did a couple hours a week, you know? It's like, man, I'm making still more than I did at my regular job. I'm, I was like, well, what if, if I can do that in a couple hours, what if I did like 40 hours? Or what if when I hear these guys like, oh, if you start a business, you're going to work 50 hours. What if I did that? How fast could I do what I just did in two hours if I worked 50 hours to do it? People don't have that sometimes. Sometimes it takes them longer to have that mindset. Now, if you haven't had that mindset yet, now's the time. No matter where you are in your business, if you look at it, man, I could, 
I could do more. I could be more efficient. I could implement the dentist clothes. I could implement the um, experience theory. I could create this thing. I could be the apple where people feel so good. If I really did this, where could I be? And if you look at the big companies who you think did it overnight, that's what happens. They have that mindset. They don't have the one and done mindset. Back to these guys that are starting kind of in this company who are watching this content thinking this is the way to do it. They go out and they buy this expensive equipment and then they just go and find one person and do it and they're on to the next one like this is the way to do it. You're not building a company, you just have a job. Which if that's what you want, that's fine. But what if you took that and decided to create a company with that mindset? That's the difference between having strength and not. Building a business and having a job. That's the difference between momentum and not having momentum. And the big whole big problem is, is the now thing, right? Everybody wants to have money now. They want to be successful now. They want to, you know, well, hey, I'm just starting off. What, what, what can I do then? What, what, what possibly can I do? The only thing I don't like in, in door knocking versus everything else is how intrusive it is. No one's ever happy to see you, not ever, not once, right? Even if you get them to say yes, the initial experience was so gross, they just, they don't have a great feeling. The reason that people do that is because they can go there, push their way in, and within 10, 15 minutes, they could have a yes. They go, wow, yeah, I'm building a business. No. You're the guy at the mall who sprays people when they walk past with the cologne. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes a pushy salesman. When you go look at cars, you sit in your car to look at them because you don't want salesmen to come up and, and pest you right away. So now you have people showing up at your house. This isn't creating strength. It's the now. So people go, well, what, what can I do? What possibly things can I do to get business? If you're already willing to walk through a neighborhood, knock and bother people, put up a door hanger. Put up a flyer. Hit that neighborhood all the time. If your mindset is the hustle, you're getting out there, you're doing it, you're walking, you're putting miles on the shoes, do it in a way that people will love the initial experience into it. Do a door hanger. It's the reason I don't like um, where they do, I forget what they call them, but they put like a business card in a, in a baggie with rocks and throw it on the gravel on the driveway. That's another one. Oh, I can hit so many. Yes, but who wants to find you from litter. You're going to make more people upset. And even if so, they're like, well, this company threw rocks in my driveway. Well, do things the way that you'll already lay the platform for allowing them to be happy, to love the experience. You guys know SEO for me is, is by far the best thing you could do for a company, but it's expensive. Not everybody can do that in the beginning, and it takes some time. So if you can do SEO right now, if it's in the budget, start it now. You won't see benefits for it for a couple months. But once that happens, remember we talked about momentum. Momentum, people start calling, right? If you go out and do flyers, door hangers, if you have the money and you go to do EDDM, now you can cover a bunch of things. People are getting it. it is absolutely not intrusive and it triggers something in their head and they want to call you. If somebody calls you, they love the idea because they made the idea. If you go to them, they didn't come up with the idea. You're forcing your thoughts and, and theories on them. It takes time, and that's why people don't do it. When you see companies, and you're like, oh, man, there's so many new guys here. So many new guys. Oh, this is crazy. I can't believe the competition. They're not competition because you have momentum. You're doing it right. They're not going to. If you're new in business and you think that this door knocking thing is going to do it for you, but you want this to be a company, if you're just a high schooler just doing this because you're off in the summer and want to make some cheddar, sweet. Absolutely. I'll 100% get behind that. Go make some cheddar, man. Your, your, your buddies are flipping burgers for next to nothing and you are out there doing that. But if you're looking at building a business, if you're going to go to school so you can make X amount per hour in this job that you now have a degree and then you go, well, I could make twice that or three times that a window cleaning and I don't need a degree and I could start now. 
If you're doing that and building a business and making it a structure, focus on the business, not the dollar. It's so hard though to not have money. When you don't have anything, it's really easy to just go out there and do that. But that's the difference between the strength. And I'm gonna kind of close on one piece of advice. If you don't know this one, I'm gonna go back into it. I've done it quite a bit, but I'm going into it right now again one more time. I usually don't touch on it, but you've heard me say the dentist clothes. The dentist clothes is a, a concept that I've been using for a long time and I talk about it all the time. I made up the term only so that you would wrap your brain around it because before this, very, very few, I not ever even heard of somebody, maybe they're out there. But before I started kind of talking this side of it, you would tell somebody like, you have to go and repeat. You have to, before you leave a job, you need to have them already booked. People would be like, no, I'm not, I'm not bugging my customers. Like if they want it, they'll call me. Maybe, and I did for a lot of the beginning part, I would call spring and fall, pre-spring, pre-fall, call my people and say, hey, we're putting together a list and we didn't see your name on there. Great way to get people on. Here's the thing. When you go to the dentist, and again, wrap your brain around it. When you go to the dentist, every time, no matter what dentist you are, where you are in the country, when you go to the dentist, when you're done, you leave with the little toothbrush and the floss you won't use and the little baggie that says, hey, here's the dentist. But inside there is your next appointment for six months. No one ever has gone, this dentist is just trying to make money off me. Nobody's like, oh, and uh, your next appointment uh, is in six months, September. You still want a morning appointment? You're like, no, I don't want you to sign up for another appointment. <laughs> if you wrap your brain around that that happens every time and it's happened to you, Every time, if you're going to the dentist regular, which I hope you are, if you are, it's happened to you every single time you've gone to the dentist for six months, every six months, every six months, and you just never questioned it. In your head, you go, well, I have to because I have to check. I got to make sure I don't have cavities. Okay. But I've gone to the dentist all my life, every six months, and I have not had a cavity in probably 10 years. Probably longer than that. I don't know. But I've gone every six months. If I didn't go every six months, I wouldn't magically have cavities. But I still go every six months. Now, take that theory and put it into your service company. When you clean someone's windows, what happens? They don't go, oh, well, thanks. They're absolutely blown away. Oh, that looks so good. I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. Thank you. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, my gosh. They're absolutely as happy as they ever be right then and there. And that's what you do is you provide a luxury service and you make people happy. Why not go, awesome, yeah, everything looks great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, did you want to have this done again in three months or did you want to wait for a full six months? If you're confident in that, just like the dentist clothes, again, wrap your brain around it, people will book six months, three months, some of them. I have some people I do every four weeks, five weeks. I have one I do every uh, eight weeks, which is uh, an odd two month thing, but people have it done regularly because they know that they're keeping it up, especially when these houses, these people wanna treat themselves. They have home cleaners that go in there and do the cleaning in their house every two weeks. You're there every six months. People have such a thing in their head that, oh, well, this is too much. I, people don't want, yes, they do. They absolutely wanna be happy every six months and you're gonna provide that for them. If you do that, you just grew your company, absolutely blew it out of the water. And you built strength and you built frequency and you know that every six months you have stuff on the books. There's companies out there that start January 1st and they already have weeks booked. If they do, then they know I have to hire more crews. I'm gonna have to hire them by this month. I know this is when everything comes. It's about. The dentist close is what makes strength and you could not close somebody after you scam them into it, after you made an awesome, awful experience. They need to be blown away from the experience. They need to be opening up their new iPhone and peeling the plastic. They have to, oh, I love this. I want to have it more. That's a dentist close. If you do that, you're building a company, not a job. If you want to go on TikTok and watch content, do it. Do it. But these are the guys also who are so delusional. If you look up their company, all negative reviews. They got a 1.3 rating. 
All their former employees have rated them bad. Everything is bad. On top of that, they, th I, I had a, a concept, which is, I always love when people do this as motivation for us, but uh, one of the guys posted, he said, um, don't worry about something. Uh, we'll, we'll put WCR out of business when we start our wholesale window cleaning supply stuff. Awesome, man. I hope you, the, the best of luck. These are the guys that are out there with training courses, 14-year-old guys who found this thing and they started a, a thing. They went, well, I can do this thing. You want to learn from me? I know how to do it. Hire my course because this is like the concept. If you want to watch it as content, do it. But when you want to build your own business, build it as a business, right? Anyway, I'm off my high horse. By the way, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and I'm gonna shameless plug again, but I wanna put your orders and it costs you not one penny extra. Actually, in checkout, you just click the little line that says, save this cart. It's right above like the checkout button. You click that button instead and then text me at 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, Jersey, what's up? Your nose is crooked, but uh, I want you to put my order in, whatever. By the way, if you do, you become a cool kid, and I want you to be a cool kid. I want to give you the limited edition cool kid sticker that only people put orders in through me get. So go and do that. Also, please go to awcmag.com. That's the American Window Cleaner magazine. It's a paper magazine, a real, not like PDF. You gotta go on that. It's a real magazine that is printed and shipped to your door with stickers every single month. Do it. Be a nerd. Build a company. Let me put your orders in and. More importantly, build the company not a or build the company not have a job, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.